Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, as you can see, we're going to be talking about solo movie toys. Um, I actually did like the solo movie uh, for what it was. I love Amelia Clark, and I actually did kind of like the actor that played Han Solo, but I didn't like him playing Han Solo. I think that they should have found a guy that looked a little bit more like Han and sounded a little bit more like Han. But this guy was actually perfect for the original canon Jason Solo, which was Han's uh, first child, or, you know, he was part of the twins, there was Jason and Jaina. Uh, but he looked like like he would have been a perfect Jason Solo, you know, like all happy-go-lucky and then go dark side and then be all crazy. Uh, but yeah, so this was the last set that they put out like a bunch of stuff for for a movie. And I think what the problem was is they put the movie out at the wrong time uh, because they just like a couple months prior, like I think it was only like five months prior, they had just released episode eight. And then right after that, right at the beginning of the summer, they put out the solo movie. And they should have waited till the winter. They should have waited till Christmas. They should have gave people a whole other year to anticipate another Star Wars movie. And then the movie would have done a lot better. But no, they had to release it way crazy early. And it kind of failed. And I think that kind of put a sour taste in the mouth as far as making products went. Um, and then after that, we haven't seen any, like, you know, they didn't make any Episode Nine stuff. We're still pissed off about that. Uh, because there was so much cool stuff that came out of Episode 9. You know, they put all this stuff out for Episode 8, even. And Episode 8 kind of destroyed Star Wars. And, if you know, they would have put as much stuff out for Episode 9 as they put for Episode 8. We would have all been super happy because there were so many cool things they could have made for Episode 9, but they didn't. Uh, but let's get into uh, the solo stuff that they did make. And they actually did make quite a bit of stuff. They made uh, vehicles. They had a lot of figures. And they actually, you know, like, we thought it was a good resurgence, and there were, you know, all this promise and hope for all this stuff that was going to come out in the future because they brought back the cardboard play sets that they had, used to have back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, but yeah, so let's check out uh, some of the stuff first. Uh, so here's some, just some of the two packs just to kind of get them out of the way. And this one was kind of cool because it's the, uh, the, you know, the mud scene where Han and Chewie, you know, Han meets Chewie down in the mud pit, and they quickly become friends because Han helps Chewie devise a plan to escape the pit. And he was the beast in the pit and blah, 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 blah so and so forth. Um, but yeah, so that was cool that they made those. And then here's a Lando. And I think this was the only way you could get a regular Lando for this set because I don't think they made a single pack Lando. Uh, you, you saw one later in the uh, VC collection, but this was the only way to get Lando for the solo set. And it came with one of the guys, the, uh, what do they call him? The, so the Kessel Guard. Just Castle Guard, which is kind of cool because, you know, they had a playset. And it would be perfect for the Castle Guard to go with the playset, and then we'll get there. Um, and then, lastly, but not least, as far as the uh, two backs go, this is just the dude with his dog. And they call Rebolt and a Corellian Hound. So this is Rebolt and a Corellian Hound. And I actually did pick up two of these sets, and I opened one of them. And I plan on actually painting the guy's visor on the other one green, so I could have two. You know, because there was two of these guys. One had the green visor, one had the orange visor. So that was my idea for making a cool custom, was to have both of those guys. Uh, let's just go on to the vehicles from here. Another cool thing about uh, the Soul movie is we got to see a whole bunch of new aliens and a whole bunch of new characters. One of the new characters was Enviz Nest. Uh, some people liked Enviz Nest, some people didn't. That was kind of a cool character to kind of thrown in. And at the end, he kind of reveals who's underneath the mask, which was kind of a big surprise. Um, but Enviz Nest, essentially, you know, spoiler alert, uh, was kind of one of the uh, forerunners of kind of forming the Rebel Alliance, you know? So, like, you know, there's a bunch of different factions, of course, of people that form the Rebel Alliance. Well, Empress Nest was a part of helping form the Rebel Alliance. Uh, moving forward, uh, let's go to... Oh, yeah, we saw some brand new, cool, really cool walkers in the Solo movie. And this one was actually pretty hard to find. Like, you never saw this really in stores anywhere. Maybe they had a Toys R Us. Uh, but it did come with a Minban Trooper, and it was just kind of a cool walker, kind of an open-top walker, kind of like how you see BB-8 turn at ATST uh, in Episode 8. Or is that? Yeah, Episode 8, BB-8 kind of, you know, accidentally tore off the top of the ATST, but this is kind of what that is. Um, but I think I ended up picking this thing up off of Amazon, because it was just kind of impossible to find anywhere else, so I was just kind of like, yeah, bit the bullet, and then went and bought it on Amazon. Um, let's go to... Oh, yeah, TIE Fighter. This is actually one of the cooler TIE Fighters that they put out in a long time as far as, like, the size of it. And, you know, the wings are kind of like the Power of the Force wings where it wasn't a sticker. It's just kind of like this kind of rubber plasticky kind of stuff for the wings. Um, but it's just a really cool color. 
came with the pilot and all that. And yeah, it's always cool to find and get a new TIE fighter. And I think this was a color that they hadn't really done yet as far as making for toys. Is that kind of gray, kind of that light gray color. But yeah, so that's the solo TIE fighter. And you know, I didn't never get, I never got one of the Millennium Falcons from the solo movie. Uh, I probably should have, but you know, eh, maybe one day I'll find one like a Goodwill or something like that, you know, because they made a ton of them. And I'm sure not everybody's going to keep them. So one day I'll probably get one of those. And then I have some cool figure packs. This is one of the other cool figure packs. This was a six pack. It came with some of the guys that you did not get in the regular packs. So you got this uh, patrol officer. This is an Imperial Patrol Trooper. And then you got, uh, you got Han in the uh, mud gear. And then you got another mud trooper. Sorry, the get a better angle. Yes, yeah, so here's Han in the mud gear, trooper gear, and here's a regular mud trooper gear. And then, of course, there's another TIE fighter pilot. Um, but yeah, so these three were kind of the cool, the highlights. Actually, this guy, too. Kind of the highlights of this pack. And then, of course, you, know, you get an old school stormtrooper and the TIE pilot. But this is a Target exclusive. And I think they ended up having a couple of them on clearance. But I got this one kind of when it first came out because they were kind of hard to find initially. Uh, but yeah, that was a cool set. One of the cooler sets to come out with the solo movie. And then here we go. On to the Fable Cardboard Play Sets. <laughs> this one was a Walmart exclusive. And this is actually Kessel. I just thought it was awesome that they finally started coming out with these, uh, you know, partial cardboard, partial plastic play sets. And the cool thing about these ones is they're double-sided. So this is just one side of a play set. you got two different play sets in one, essentially. So you just flip it around, and it becomes a whole different scene. Um, and, of course, they had different figures to go in the different scenes, so that was pretty cool. Let's see if we can get that one to not be so blurry. Um, but, yeah, so these are kind of cool to get, you know, as far as, you know, because I always like those, like, old-school, like, play sets from, you know, the original super vintage stuff from the 70s, 80s. You know, they had, like, the Land of the Jawas and, you know, the, the Cloud City and all those other different play sets. But that's not it. There's one more, and this one is pretty cool because this one is a Bandor 1. Play set and kind of came with the cool uh, plasticky uh, uh, part of the train, so you could kind of reenact the train part. And this one came with Chewbacca with the goggles. I think that was an exclusive to this play set in particular. And then I think what did you when you flip it around, it turned into something else. I think it maybe the uh, Mimbam Jail or something like that. I don't know. I kind of forget what's supposed to be the other side there, but. Um, but yeah, definitely had the two sides. So you see there, there's one side of it, and then there's the other side of it. That was kind of cool, yeah, another cardboard play set to be had. And then, oh, let's get on to the single figure. Alright, first we start with the Empire. Uh, this was kind of a cool, uh, new trooper. It's actually the First Order trooper. Um, but he's got a red pauldron. It was kind of a new figure put out in this set. I didn't really include a lot of the uh, expanded stuff into the set that I'm showing you, but I just thought it'd be kind of cool to show you this guy. This guy may have been an exclusive to somewhere. I'm not quite sure, but yeah, moving on. And this was definitely a brand new trooper, new to the solo movie. This was the range trooper. You saw these guys when they're uh, you know on the snow planet fighting uh, against, you know, they're trying to rob the train. And these guys were the guys kind of crawling along the train. And these guys were cool because they had gold on their visors. Uh, I think it was kind of a, you know, take away the glare of the snow. And of course, this was a fan favorite. This was the famous Mimban Trooper. Uh, Mimban Stormtrooper. They were just kind of muddy, and they had a cool kind of black cape. But, you know, everybody likes it when they bust out new troopers that we have not seen before. And here we had a brand new Chewbacca. You know, because you can't have another series without another Chewbacca. Uh, but this one was cool because unlike any of the other Chewbacca's before, this one came with the double bandoliers. And um, yeah, there he is in the old Chewbacca glory. Now here we see one of the new cool alien species that they showed you on the planet of Kessel. Quay Tulsite. Pretty cool looking alien. And here we got to see a brand new droid. And this was a uh, Lando Calrissian's basically servant droid. Well, you know, she said she wouldn't be a servant, but um, you know, a pretty cool uh, new version of the droid. And as you saw in the end of the movie, she actually her brain and got you know implanted into the Millennium Falcon itself. 
And here we have a fan favorite in Amelia Clark playing Kira. I always loved Amelia Clark. She was, you know, she was pretty good in this movie. Definitely a good aspect, you know, kind of a surprise ending how that ended up panning out. And here we have Woody Harrelson himself playing Tobias Beckett. It was pretty cool to see Woody in a Star Wars movie finally. I always loved Woody, especially, you know, all the way back to Cheers. He's one of the great actors of our time. And then we got to see his lady. I forget this actress's name, but she played Val. She was uh, Woody's girlfriend in the uh, movie. Uh, but she was also in Westworld. It was kind of cool. She was... Uh, Got her own little Star Wars action figure. And here we have Han Solo himself. And this is the only uh, Stormtrooper armor that we got to see Han in in this movie. It was kind of cool, though, because I like the new take on Stormtrooper armor being on a mud planet. This is the Mimbam Mud Trooper. Han Solo... And lastly, but not leastly, we got my favorite alien from this new mo from that new movie. It was Rio Durant. I love the species, and you actually get to see one of his species in the Mandalorian in the uh, when they do the prison escape. You see one of this guy's people locked in a cell. Pretty cool character, though. I liked how they did him in the movie. And of course, we can't forget about Moloch. Moloch is one of the big baddies in the beginning of the solo movie. Pretty awesome character because actually the mask on this figure comes off and it reveals the lizard head underneath. He's got a pretty cool staff too. Oh yeah, too. And we can't forget this set. This is a cool four pack that they came out with. You got Han Solo in a snow gear. It's kind of a cool fur coat. With goggles on. Another range trooper. And then we got Kira in her Kessel outfit, which is pretty cool because I like this figure a little bit better than the other one. Well, definitely a better outfit. And then this little guy. This guy was a part of Emphis Nest group of uh, rebels. Uh, I forget what his name is. I'll we'll have to look at it here. Let's see if it says it on the back. His name was Weasel. A little guy named Weasel. Maybe that was played by, uh, what's his name? The guy that played Wicket and Willow and all that. But yeah, so there's that one. All right, so that's all I have for the solo movie products. Uh, hopefully one day they make like a big, nice set like that for The Mandalorian, but we can only hope. Hasbro, uh, if you're listening, please don't screw us over. Make a nice, sweet, big set of toys like that for The Mandalorian, because that would be amazing. All right, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys soon.